Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to VCon 2020. This is the talk podium on digital transformation up close, how Heller is taking manufacturing to a new level. I hope you were able to log on without any problems and can hear us well. And before we begin, let me make some remarks. As participants and viewers, you are muted. But, of course, you can always ask questions. Just use the chat tool. You can send us questions, you can make contributions, and I'm going to come back to your comments and questions and introduce them to the discussion. And if some of the questions cannot be answered for time reasons, then you can always present your questions to the experts later on during VCon. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Frederick Rindler. I'm an editor for MAV magazine, and I am your moderator for this podium. We have Christian Kuttenbach here. He is the senior manager manufacturing at Heller, manager of operations, and there's also Bernd Zapf, senior manager development, new business and technology. He's responsible for all future topics here at Heller. Now, let us start right away. Digital transformation up close, how Heller is taking manufacturing to a new level. We are right at Heller, and for a hundred years, uh, machine tools have been manufactured here at high levels of accuracy. So universal manufacturing requires an enormous amount of work. And how this can be done? is something that we would like to discuss here, and we would also like to show you the benefits of digitalization. Mr. Kuttenbach, what is so special about Heller Manufacturing? What are your challenges? Well, we are confronted with a level of complexity which is, which is unprecedented. 85% of all mechanical parts that are responsible for the accuracy, long service life and um, precision are produced here at Heller Group. Let me give you a presentation of some of the highlights just to give you the dimensions of what we're talking about. Because we're talking about 5,000 different IDs, part IDs, which are in some 30,000 manufacturing orders and 300,000 operations using different methods and also workplaces, uh, operator workplaces, but also manual workplaces. So all these workplaces are combined and we are trying to set up the most effective sequences. And if you're talking about universal manufacturing, this doesn't mean that we're talking about series production. We're talking about small batches, one to eight pieces per batch. And this is what makes all this so complex. And for this reason, five years ago, we launched a comprehensive digitalization project. So all our machines distributed at uh, three different manufacturing locations. So all these machines were connected in order to exchange machine data. So machine data acquisition took place and also 150 workplaces are now collecting data. So at all three manufacturing locations, uh, we can take a look at the different jobs. And all this is then introduced to a new planning system, the advanced planning and scheduling system. So and in order to be able to plan multi-level, we also introduce the two life cycle management system and equipment management system. So that allows multi-level planning. So we're not only talking or, and analyzing the capacity of the workplace, but we're also looking at the fixture and the NC program to make sure that they are available at the right time. And um, then we can read out all the data via the Heller Services Interface, which is a tool which helps the availability and effectiveness of the machine. So all these systems supply us with data, a large number of data. And um, you saw the ones and zeros, uh, so all these digits, so we have all this information, all the data available. 
And this data is then aggregated for um, performance indicators. And these are performance indicators for your work. And the most important KPI is the OEE, which stands for productivity. And this productivity consists of several different factors, the availability of the workplace, the effectiveness of the workplace, and the quality rate of the product which is produced at that workplace. And all this is then visualized in a cockpit. So all these different performance indicators um, are displayed in this cockpit. So depending on the hierarchy level, the worker will look at certain different data and um, his manager will look at different data. And then the management level or the executive level will look at different data again. So the data, of course, um, you know, the data per se do not uh, provide productivity. It is important that those data are then made available at the shop floor and the upper hierarchy levels, the managers, the quality assurance people, the business managers, operations managers can use this data in order to initiate measures and actions. Now you were talking about universal manufacturing here at Heller. Now you talked about the digital package. Um, are only Heller machines connected to this uh, digitalization? Well, this is exactly the difference between universal manufacturing and line production because, um, of course, we have different makes of machines, different control systems, also different ages um, of machine tools. And this is then rounded off by uh, quite a large number of manual workplaces that are integrated. Now, this is what universal manufacturing is all about. Now, there are many things that you have to take into account. How did you start off at the beginning? Well, actually, we started off five years ago. We set up a comprehensive digitalization roadmap. So all the steps of digitalization were um, presented on that roadmap. And our management then invested a lot of money to enable all these steps and all these measures. But um, at the end of the day, it's the workers that have to be included. So it was possible for us to explain it to the works councillors' way that, as well, well, that the digitalization, digitalization grows jobs, it ensures and safeguards jobs. So I believe it's uh, quite an important question to ask. Um, are, is there any effectiveness enhancement already visible right now? Oh, yes, absolutely. Five years ago, we started off with these five elements that belong to this digitalization initiative. So in 2018, we saw a productivity increase of 9%. In 2019, it was a further 6%. So in order to make sure that there are no in misunderstandings or misinterpretations, the process between the raw material and the finished finished part or the finished assembly, this is the potential that we have to leverage. So it's not the individual machine, but of course it starts at any individual workplace. And this is especially what we cover with the header services interface, because the availability of the workplace, the availability of the machine, and uh, then at the end of the day also the effectiveness of machining hours and how they are used for productivity. Mm, how have productivity, quality and availability changed specifically? Well, let's start with the OEE, which is the productivity, um, which consists of these three factors, availability, quality and effectiveness. So also quality. Now, the quality is something that you can identify by quality indicators and then also being able to respond to 
problems in quality. And um, all this then makes sure that the machining hour is used with high quality and also the availability, as I said, of the workplace of the machine. And we always look at every job from three perspectives. On the machine side, you know, what are trouble, some trouble that can be caused by the machine or also failures in availability, then also the job itself, so what kind of job is it, but then also the third perspective, which is the worker and what can the worker to do in order to contribute towards productivity and a good OEE. Now, my question is, what are the digital products uh, that uh, Heller offers? Now, we were able to support Mr. Kurtenbach in uh, this or on this journey, actually. So we started to provide digital products. For the first time, we had to create an infrastructure. And um, Mr. Kurtenbach, then he described the challenges. And we came up with specifications for our developments so that we can provide solutions to the challenges that he posed to us. Now, Heller for Industry is really the buzzword under which all these products are now offered. Well, yes, um, let me show you a few slides that we've prepared for this meeting here, for this event. Now, when we talk about Industry 4.0 for machine tools, the first thing that you have to look at is what digitalization means for a machine tool and how can you use it successfully. Now, at the beginning, there is the requirement that Dr. Kurtenbach mentioned. It's all about tools that increase the effectiveness. So at the end of the day, you want a better OEE. And this is done by increasing the output, the quality, and by offering the worker an environment in which he begins to get a better understanding of the machine. This is what we mean by digitalization for machine tools. So what can be improved about a machine tool? Our customers know our machines, they've been presented earlier on, they are highly automated, they are highly efficient, high-tech, they can provide lots of different processes, so what can be improved? And digitalization answers this question. By means of digitalization tools, we can give the machine a memory, comparable to the memory of a human. If you have a memory as a human, you can learn, you can observe, and uh, what you've learned can then be applied to the future. What do we need for that? Well, first of all, Dr. Kurtenbach mentioned it, there's a lot of data. What do you do with the data? You record the data, you relate the data to each other, and just like in a human brain. And then you can use the possibility of conditioning the data, adding algorithms, so that we can make forecasts, identify trends, and maybe in the future, or probably in the future, we will also apply AI algorithms so that we can observe and evaluate and learn. Now you can close the circle of efficiency enhancement. So let's say you have a Heller machine with a 47 kW motor spindle and turn it into a machine with a 70 kW motor spindle. But you can see from what you've learned, from what you've recorded, whether the motor spindle has only been loaded with 10 kW and that there are load reserves that can be identified so that we can go for 20 or 30 kW in this process so as to achieve a better chip removal rate and an improved per piece time. In addition, with this memory, we can identify imminent failures. So this means that we can warn the worker in good time so that any unplanned downtimes can be avoided. This is how we increase the machining time of the machine and um, its more effective use in production.
In addition, we would like to offer workers the possibility to prepare jobs and follow-on jobs right there at the machine. And the machine can take care of the machine, the worker can take care of the machine. So this is how we can make sure that this highly automated machine can even experience a, an increase in effectiveness just by uh, including it more effectively in the entire network of production. Let me tell you what some of the objectives are, because this is, you know, the requirement of Dr. Kurtenbach. What is customer benefit in this case? Well, it is reduction of per piece costs. And if we can achieve this, we have objectives such as productivity increases, quality increases, and availability increases for the machine. And um, in order to do that, we look at tasks such as data recording, then also maintenance topics, um, such as preventive maintenance, condition monitoring, condition-based maintenance, and then uh, things such as improving production, improving the yield of the machine, and last but not least, energy management because we want an energy-efficient machine. And this is how we can contribute to environmental protection and sustainability. So at the end of the day, the product that we are making available is, of course, always based on our Heller machines with our digital helpers or digital assistants, the knowledge of our workers and the support of our service department. Now, this is how we can offer all these benefits. Now, just to give you an insight uh, in how these digital assistants behave in the machine and what they do. Now here, this is a view of the work area and from our point of view, this is the most important place for optimization for our customers. Now we have process control right at the beginning that controls the performance and the feed force. And then, in case of a crash, especially when you handle raw parts, there is collision identification with damage mitigation. This is something that is comparable to compass zones in a car. Then we have tool monitoring, and this has been complemented by service life optimization. And this is how you can achieve a maximum yield per tool. And Again, the view of the work area, and Dr. Kurtenbach said it, everything becomes transparent for the worker, they can see everything that happens in the work area, and all the screens that we are offering are in the form of dashboards, so the worker can see everything at a glance. Now, for the periphery, there we have energy monitoring. So power and air consumption can be monitored. And then you have all the possibilities for optimization available. And for our service department, there are condition-dependent tools. So the ball bearing screw and all the bearings and the spindle can be monitored for chatter and vibration. And Umati is the interface that responds to the large variety of different machines where we can connect different machines, connect them to an MES or ERP system. And all this means that the worker has all these digital assistants available, the machine becomes transparent, and the worker can understand all the data It is displayed to him on the screen, and this is how they can use all the data for preparing upcoming jobs. Last but not least, there's another mm, slide that shows you how, what happens if you do not have these digital assistants, because you cannot use all this important data for design, for job preparation, for technology preparation. All this would not be available. So you would have your NC programs and tool data on your machine. So it is something that is really useful for your work preparation. So digital twins can be created. 
and they can be compared to the data that are collected. And this is how you get to a situation where the increased OEE for customers can be realized. So that was quite a comprehensive picture that was presented to us. Now I'd like to ask our viewers or tell them that they have the possibility to ask questions. So please make sure of the chat if you have any questions. I actually have a question. The Heller Services Interface, you mentioned it. Um, what is my benefit as a customer of the HSI? Now, the HSI is really a di data storage. It's not like you take pictures and put them in a big box. No, the data is put in order and it is available in a related way, just like in the human brain. And this is data that we then display on different screens so that customers can do evaluations, but they can also read out the data and uh, process them in MES or ERP systems or other planning tools just the way Dr. Kurtenbach has described it earlier on. So you told us about all these different possibilities, but how many machines today are connected to the HSI? Now, together with our service colleagues, we started off uh, three years ago with Heller for Industry, and all the data are in the cloud and are made available via the interface. And these are a little more than 300 machines that are now connected at more than 80 customers. And these are the machines that are supported by our service colleagues in close cooperation with our customers. Now, we're talking about all these machines that are connected. Now you're thinking of big firms that would be interested, big companies. But what about smaller or medium-sized companies? Is it worth for them as well? Well, we believe it can be placed in all areas of industry. And actually, we are going to provide the data in different ways, in different presentation modes. Now, smaller companies tend to use the dashboards. They're easy to understand. But then if you have medium or large companies, they like to to read out the data, they like to use MDA and PDA interfaces so that um, all the data that give you information about what's going on in the machine can be further processed and used in MES and ERP systems. So this is something that uh, is beneficial for both smaller customers who tend to use the dashboards and bigger customers who tend to use a further processing and further evaluation of these data. Well, you talked about Umati. Could you explain just very briefly what Umati is all about? Because this is something that has really become a buzzword. What are the benefits of Umati? Well, thanks for that question. It's a good question. Umati was a challenge which was brought about by, you know, what uh, Dr. Kurtenbach said earlier on. You do not only have Heller machines there on your shop floor. There are other machines such as cleaning machines, measuring machines, and what have you. And it used to be difficult to make sure that these machines talk a different language. So it was tricky to have them talk to each other, and you had to make sure that they do. UMATI, that's the Universal Machine Tool Interface, is something that we created in the VDW Association in Germany. And the basis for this is OPC UA communication, where you can use an efficient data change at individual data level, a protocol that is now available, and if customers have the UMATI certificates, the machines can talk and uh, they speak the same digital language, so that it becomes very easy to network these different uh, machines and you can exchange much more information than in the past. Now, I'd like to remind you of the chat, but did we get any questions in the chat? 
No questions right now. Well, then I will ask another question. Now, both of you are here, and of course we talked a lot about the past, but we'd also like to talk about the future. So, what's going to happen in the future when it comes to digitalization? Well, uh, I'm going to ask the question, uh, answer the question, but maybe Dr. Kurtenbach will say a few words as well. Now, what we learned when we worked with Dr. Kurtenbach, but also other production departments, um, it becomes more and more important to um, actually be able to use data. So you want to collect data, and um, customers need specific data that they want to then evaluate. And we're also working on the possibility to have several operations taking place simultaneously, because this will then increase efficiency even more. Let me give you an example. A measuring process in the work area is a sequential process. So we're working on being able to do this in parallel, to do this simultaneously. Parallelization is the buzzword. And in the future, we will also use AI algorithms, which are still comprehensible for humans, and that is important to us. So these uh, AI algorithms may be applied in the future. We're in a very early stage of this, but uh, we will have to work closely with the workers so that to make it uh, comprehensible to them what's happening with these uh, AI algorithms. So we believe that this is what we have to work on in order to even improve the situation further. Dr. Kurdenbach. Yes, um, I would like to give you an example from my past. I was an apprentice as well. And in those times, there were these, you know, many machines in the company. And then there were these ingenious mill or lathe operators. So they were the masters. They had their tools all locked away. So all the knowledge was locked away either in their brains or in their cabinets. And I believe that our challenge today is the knowledge transfer. So tool data, NC programs, so all this knowledge must be in one pool. You know, not like in the shoebox that we uh, mentioned earlier on or that Mr. Zapf mentioned. No, it's got to be a pool and it has to be knowledge and data that is accessible for use for every worker. Because this is an opportunity, I believe, for our country, for countries such as Germany, where labor is not the cheapest and we need to be profitable as well. Well, we've also learned that not every customer wants their machine connected to the Internet. So we learned that. And we have added the possibility to the program of Heller that we can create a small cloud for the machine that is uh, then implemented on an industrial PC. It runs the same software as the one that we have on the Internet. So digitalization happens right on the machine without being connected to the Internet. And if customers want automated evaluation of the data, the Heller services interface can be installed on a server inside the company, in the company network. Work. This means that the data stays in the company and the knowledge that is available in all these technologies and uh, which uh, is important for such a manufacturing uh, production is available, but it is not on the web. Uh, but apart from that, if you're on the cloud, you have all the tools available, and then, of course, this is knowledge which can also be shared with our service people, and our service people are then in a much better position to support customers. But um, this way, we can do both. We can handle the data only locally, or in the cloud, just as customer wish. Now, as you can see, uh, the experts are here to answer your questions. Both of them will then also be available elsewhere at the VCon if you have any specific questions. But I would like to thank the panelists and uh, it is great that we have been able to get such an insight into what's happening at Heller. 
I would like to recommend the roundtables to you. You can register for these roundtables. Um, participant numbers are limited. Uh, but now we're going to continue at 10 o'clock. The new uh, generation of the HF will be presented. So please stay tuned. We hope that you enjoy VCON together with us. See you later. <laughs>